I will um, get started on the coloring and then I might uh, go ahead and let you listen to music just so I can, I don't know, enjoy some quiet time, I guess, while I'm coloring. Um, this is E40 that I'm starting with. I'm going to use the E4 series. So E40, E41, E42, and E43 to color the bunny. And uh, per my usual coloring technique, um, I don't ever actually do a you know a really good even blend. I like adding um, just bits of color here and there, and I almost almost always leave open white space where I don't actually put any color at all. And uh, as I'm coloring along, I tend to drag the pen sideways and leave little dots here and there, and it all just kind of lends itself to a really relaxed style of coloring. And uh, in my opinion, I think it um, has a watercolory type of a look. So um, I enjoy coloring this way and not being so hung up on getting perfect blends and coloring in every single um, speck of the image. I kind of like just the really relaxed coloring style. And um, where I tend to put uh, more color is where uh, shadows would fall. So for example, eventually I'll put more color here under the bunny's chin. I'll put more color here uh, behind the potted plant uh, on the bottom side of his legs and tiny hiney here. <laughs> where you would expect there to be less light uh, to show. So that was the E40 pen. Now I'm going to move on to the E41 pen and go over those same um, areas, but just in a smaller um, section here. So I'm not reaching completely as far as I did with the previous color. But still allowing that pen to just kind of drift and add little dots here and there. And when I get to a spot that I think there would be a cast shadow from something in front of it, um, then I'll go ahead and add a little bit more pigment then. And that will uh, give the um, illusion of shadow. All right, so that was E41. Now I'm gonna move on to E42. And I'll go even less distance in my colored area. Still just moving the pen around uh, here and there. And finding those areas where that shadow would be cast. So I try not to make it too complicated. And I have one more, which is the E43. And I'll do the exact same thing. There's the fur of the bunny colored. Very cute. Now I'm going to use the E40 to add just a little bit of um, color to his ears, the inside of his ears. And again, not going the full um, 
not covering the full area, leaving actually some open space there or white space there. And I'm going to use the R11 or R11 pen uh, to add just a little bit of pink there, just to give his um, the inside of his ears some life. And I'm going to use that same pen here on his nose and on his little cheeks. Real cute. I'm going to add a little bit of life here to the pads of his feet. And I'll go back in with that E40 as well. Um, on the pads of his feet. So there my bunny is colored. Real cute. I don't need to color his teeth. I'm just going to leave those white as they are. I might add a little bit of darker brown to his nose here. Uh, I think I'll go with the... E44 pen and add just a little line of color there on his nose. All right, so now it's time to color the flower pot. So I think I'll go with um, I think I'll go with maybe uh, let's see. I've got these little um, pieces of scratch paper here or uh, scrap papers. Um, here next to me. So I think I'll just pull some spring colors out of here and then I'll use these um, to make my card as well. So these are cute little spring colors, just of some scraps of paper that I pulled out of my bin. And uh, I think I'll just pull some colors out of here. So I kind of like this orange, but I, you know, with the light brown bunny, that might just be too um, blah. So let's see if there's a pretty color in here. Oh, I really like this aqua color. So let's go with that one. We'll go, go with BG11, White Moon. Um, and I'll use that for the flower pot. And I'll put some pink in those hearts there on the flower pot as well. And then I think I will also use BG13 um, just to add a little bit more depth to the color there. It's raining pretty good, so I'm hoping that we don't actually lose power tonight. Hoping that internet outage is temporary. I think I'll use the same color on the bow, um, the bunny's bow. So this is BG11. And then I'll use BG13 to add a little more color. And now I'm going to move on to the tulip. Um, I kind of like the YG03 color. Um, it's a nice spring green, so I think I'll give that one a go. And the stem as well. And then I think to darken that up a little bit, I'll use YG06 for just a, a smidge of a darker green. There, that's pretty cute. And as for the tulip, I think I'm going to go with pink. So I've got the um, R11 marker down here. So I'll pop that in, pop a little bit of pink down in here, and then um, add the um, um, R20 for just a bit more color. And then I think I'll add um, R22 uh, for just a little bit more saturation down here. There we go. So I think to add just a little bit more interest here to my coloring, I think I'll get out my um, some of my colored pencils and add just a little bit of um, texture there. So using colored pencils is a really nice way to add um, fine lines, like if you want to add uh, hair, animal hair, it's a nice way to 
um, just add some small details. And you don't have to have a, you know, a whole lot of markers if you have colored pencils that you can also supplement your coloring with. I think I'm going to look for a light brown. And I've got all my um, pencils in a little holder here next to me. Sometimes it can be kind of challenging to find the exact color I'm looking for. And because this paper is textured, it has a really um, interesting effect with the colored pencils. It really shows the texture of the paper nicely. And I like to color, when I color with pencils, I like to color in little circular motions. I think I'm going to darken up this bunny a little bit and add a little bit of um, texture there as well. And one of the things to remember when you're using pencils and adding texture like this is, like uh, for example, if you're adding hair, um, draw your texture in the same direction that hair would grow. I think you'll be happier with your results that way. I have uh, several brands of pencils. This one's a Soho Urban Artist pencil. Um, it has a little bit firmer lead than the Prismacolor pencils do. Um, so I, I kind of like these just for adding little bits of detail, like for grasses and um, like if I'm going to add some flowers and things like that around the bunny um, or around any image that I'm coloring, it's nice to have these a uh, little bit firmer um, pencil leads just to add some really nice fine grasses. So I'll show you how to do that as well. find a nice green here. So here's an olive green. And you can add your grass lines too in front of your stamped creatures. It just adds a little bit of life to your image. And also grounds the image too, so it's not left floating in space. And then also, um, it's a good thing to use a couple different colors when you're doing grass, because not grass isn't always just one color. So try and um, utilize a couple of colors, and you'll get a little bit more depth and interest to your coloring. Here's an old blast from the past. This is one of my Design Spectra Color pencils. This is from when I was in college. <laughs> I love these pencils. I like them better than the Prismacolors. They're really soft lead, but really difficult to find. They don't make them anymore, so if you're going to find it, you'd find them in the used, used craft supply um, space. But they're designed Spectracolor. Really, really nice quality pencil. All right, so I think I'm happy with that. So there you can see how just by using the pencils, I've added a little bit of detail there, giving my bunny a little bit more interest. Thanks so much for watching my video. I will leave links to the images from High Hopes down below. Please check them out. And uh, 
Thanks so much for watching. Talk to you later. Bye.